Many years ago, perhaps nearly 30 years ago, we travelled across the Somerset levels to go and see my old friend Roger Wilkins, the cider maker. And we found them busy with the cider making process. Uh, very busy it was too, and it was a good morning out for us on the film crew. I always enjoy going to see Roger. This wasn't the first time I visited uh, with him. Since film this, I must have been out to Land's End Farm Mudgley many, many times. And I always enjoy a visit there. And just as much as I enjoyed talking to Roger, I also like taking home a flagon or two of his wonderful Somerset cider. It's really good stuff. Something honest about it. Later in this little video, Roger talks about what he does and why he does it, how he does it. Um, but I'm just going to let the video roll on. And I hope you enjoy these images. I expect Roger is still making cider in exactly the same way with exactly the same press. I must go up there and see him soon, I think. Time I bought some more flagons of cider and had a chat with good old Roger. He's always got a story to tell. Had him in the paper many, many times over the years. Often used to ring in for a quote if I was doing a story on cider. Anyway, here's Roger Wilkins and his cider pressing activities way back in the 90s. on the slide because if you keep the slide out the pulp will keep coming down. So so it's the the upright, yeah, it? that's it. You you balance it by the lifting it. Yeah, that, how many apples worth going to each uh, tray on the cheese? There's roughly a hundred pounds of apples in each layer and we put twelve or thirteen layers to each pressing, each cheese. Yeah. And you're about to press now, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that one under in a minute when that one's finished. <laughs> you never believe it was so sweet. Would you? Oh no, when you bite a cider apple, he's dry and bitter, and and yet, quick as we crush it up, you taste the apple juice, and it's sweet as honey. Sweet so as you. Within seconds, going through your crush, it is, it's gone to sweet juice. Yeah, without anything added. No sugar, natural sugar, and the natural yeast that's in the apple, and then the cider ferments on, it own, on its own, so there's no um, additives at all in it. So in your cider, you don't add any sugar, any yeast or anything? No, no, not for the dry cider. For the sweet cider, I do add about four or five teaspoons of saccharin to every hundred gallons, just to sweeten it for sweet cider. Yeah. And dry so is left natural. And these are natural yeasts that cause the alcohol? Yeah, the yeast is in the skin of the apple. When they get crushed up, that actual yeast automatically comes alive within a matter of a day or two days, and that starts fermenting on its own. And uh, you're saying in the cheese now behind you, there's 1,200 pounds of apples, roughly. That's, that's right. And so you're going to press that in a second. Under what sort of weight will that be pressed? Uh, the actual press, I press at 3,500 pounds a square inch, and it's a 100 ton press. And with a little bit of luck, we should get 100 or 110 gallons of cider from the one press. So, so it's a, a gallon, uh, well, I can't work it out, my maths isn't very good. <laughs> but, uh, 100 gallons for 100 pounds. So you're roughly talking 150 to 160 gallons per tonne of apples. 
That's excellent. And how, how long would it take your pickers to pick a ton of apples? I mean, is that a long process? Oh, not really. If the apples were thick, uh, they'd pick a ton a day each, right? A ton a day each? Yeah. yeah. Time and then there's me and me and the other son now, but like there's only about three of us all together. This is the sort of thing that you'd like to hand down to to your sons. Well, yeah, if they're interested in it, they could take it on one day. I got another few you're left in me yet. Yeah, Did you take it over from your father? Was your father a cider maker? Uh, actually, I took it over from my grandfather. I used to help my grandfather, and then when he died, I took it over from him. That was about. Oh, 25 years ago now, 24 years ago. Do you think that the cider that you've made has improved over that quarter of a century as you've got more skillful in making it, or has it always been much the same? Very much the same over the years. Just as long as you get good apples and keep some in it. I didn't go around that happened once before. It's a good limit. Let's the cameras there. is done but Roger, what's it like in there? It's pretty, you don't get claustrophobic in there then? No, no, it's all right. It's a bit sweaty. You haven't had, you have never had one roll away with you then? No, no, no. We, we, the people have shook me up a couple of times, tipped me up. There's an old chap down in there, I think. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Got me wet through. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been in one, sir? No, I don't go to start. <laughs> I hear that you nearly rolled Roger's wife away one day. Yes, I did. <laughs> I threatened to, but she got worried. I bet she did. No, he's coming out now, isn't he? Yeah. Never got stuck. No, I yeah, have. I've lost my treasures a couple of times before now, coming out. <laughs> uh, Roger, what about the big vats behind you? Do you have to go down in them? Yeah, we get in those, and we leave them open for two or three days and put the hose pipe in and swill all the sediment, the grout out. Because otherwise the fumes in there wouldn't catch you, catch hold like. Do you always do it with a, with a mate just to make sure that you don't pass? Yeah, we out? always got two people there when we do them, yeah, just in what case. What they used to do in the old days? Well, years ago with the big wooden vats, they used to light a candle and put a candle down inside. And if the candle did burn, it was safe to get in. If the candle did go out, well then it wasn't safe to get down inside the vat because of the fumes of the cider in the wood, mm. which. Uh, in the old wooden vats, you have more fumes in those than what you do in these fiberglass vats. Yeah, yeah. Roger, looking through the lens here, I can see there's an old sort of mach hand driven machine behind you. What's that thing over there? Oh, uh, that's old uh, mango pulper. What we used to pulp the mangoes and the potatoes to feed the beef cattle and that. Right. Well, we're already putting the cider. Yeah. <laughs> Some people put mangoes in cider, don't they? Yes, yes. Well, what, what does that do then? That's not, not apple well, cider anymore. Well, 
Bag goes his way, didn't it? They make ma 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 mango, ma wine. mango wine out of it. Yeah. Get the mango juice. Get it at Christmas time and sugary, they get good good results. Have you ever drunk it? Yes, I drank mango wine. Yes. It's good old stuff. Or yes, what? good stuff at Christmas time. Yeah. Isn't it, Roger? Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. These these when were these uh, made? The, this side are made in these vats now. Ah. Uh, only about uh, a week ago, less than a week ago, and it's fermenting real strong now. And that's the natural yeast, natural sugar. And all this bubble, the scent you get up, there's a strong smell, isn't there, that comes off? Oh, yeah, if you keep sniffing that all day, you, you won't want to drink any. You, you can get drunk without drinking it. Can you really? Yes. And, and all those bubbles come I see the old wasp like it there. The, the bubbles coming up, and that's just the yeast working away. Yeah, it? the natural yeast and the natural sugar that's in the apple. Now, what would happen if you drank a lot of that right now? Um, might make you run to the toilet a bit quick, but... <laughs> right. Okay, Roger. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, that's great.